Oh, this, oh, this is some ahead. roller skating test footage that you put on Excalibur, and it is so <laughs> yeah, funny. That's right, yeah. We got a, we got like. No, no, Jeff, just wait. I forget I remember this. <laughs> I forget this. <laughs> 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 Who is that? I'm so horrified. Yeah, I pitched a game mode and no one wanted to ship it. <laughs> so, DevStream 169 has just ended. The bonus 10 year special DevStream, the nostalgia DevStream, if you want to call it that. But we did also get a preview of some big things to come from Digital Extremes, which means we got some stuff to talk about. So in a minute, we'll cover all of the details about the upcoming celebrations. And what better way to celebrate today's video than with a raid, but not just any raid, a raid Shadow Legends sponsor. You got phones, don't you? Time to use them. It's got over 700 unique champions for you to collect, gear, power up and group with other champions to do battle. It has a tactical RPG battle system, amazing graphics, both PVE and PVP battles, not to mention regular events and tournaments with rewards for you to collect and up upgrade your champions. It has arena to test yourself against other players champions and climb those rankings while getting rewards. It has Irrigot the Eternal Dragon, the Doom Tower boss, which is let me tell you, no joke whatsoever. The Demon Lord Clan Boss, which is one of the best ways to earn powerful daily rewards like shards, gems, potions, or artifacts. So make sure and join a clan to take part in that. And since it is a big week for Bertas, it is now also Raid's fourth anniversary, which means tons of free gifts, promo codes, events, and the anniversary-themed Legendary Champion Fusion event, where you can get a chance to get the supreme versions of the four beginner champions, Aethel, Gaelic, Elhane, and of course, Kill. Not to mention, if you're an Amazon Prime member, then there is still a powerful Savage Gear set up for grabs as a Prime reward. So if you haven't started playing Raid yet, then click on my link in this video's description or scan the QR code on screen right now and new players can get their hands on the Epic, Kel and the Shrike and other rewards. And since it is Raid's 4 year anniversary, you can also use the code 4 years Raid for some legendary skill tomes and more. So click on the link below, jump into the game and hopefully I will see you on the battlefield. Now this is the second dev stream for March, but the main thing about this dev stream is the 10 year rewards, right? That's what everyone wants to know about. What free stuff are we getting this year? This year will be 10 weeks of free items for you to get your hands on. Some of those items you might already have, like the past rewards for every year leading up to now, which will mean certain items will just give you free slots instead, like the Dex Excalibur, and there is an also an Aura form on week 1 and 2. Week 3 and 4 will be the Dex Sabaris, the Lyset skin, and of course a bonus credit weekend. Week 5 and 6 will be the Dex Fury, some armor, and of course more double credits. Week 7 and 8 will be the Rhino Dex skin, Dex Dakra. Week 9 and 10 will be the Wisp Dex skin, companion slots, a Cyanana, and of course genetic codes. Now week 11 onwards are still to be announced what those rewards will be, but they did say that more big 10 year rewards will be available in the run up to Tenocon, like this Liger in Azuka Drifter skin, which we haven't seen in game, but Liger in Azuka's work kind of speaks for itself at this point. On top of that, in this image, we see the Dex Wisp on the left with the Dex Furious, but on the right, Dex Excalibur has what looks like a Dex Tonfa, so maybe Dex Cronin, we don't know yet, but it could be a hint of something to come. Now, there is a lot of free stuff for you to get your hands on this year, starting on March the 24th with week one and two, leading right the way up to Tenacon. Now, during this dev stream, we also got a live look at Soul Frame, some live gameplay in action during the dev stream. It was a very, very early look with plenty of jank and they said that it is nowhere near ready for release and they didn't think about showing it off, but since it is a 10 year anniversary for Digital Extremes of Warframe, they thought it would be nice just to give the community a little bit of a glimpse or a bit of a window into the progress that the game is making. But I will do maybe a proper video on that tomorrow, going over my thoughts on some of the early combat and settings of what we've seen, the visuals, the audio, all of that. I know it's early days, but I did like what I've seen. I got hit. Don't <laughs> worry, I turned on God mode, Scott. <laughs> Good, I need it. <laughs>
Get him. Oh. He's getting mad. Jobs good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, also, we got an early look at Rebecca's Drifter fighting against a mounted Dax unit in Daviri. Plenty of radial attacks and stuff to dodge. Um, I'm just kind of showing off all the animations and moves in context. So good. I'm yeah. not really going. And that skybox, come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ridiculous. So this is something that, as you're playing through the Daviri paradox, maybe one of your uh, mission steps in your daily quest is going to be you got to take down this enemy. They also showed us what will be a two-stage mounted boss fight against the giant Aura Worm in Daviri. Rebecca was flying up to it and then grappling onto the side of the worm, which looked like there was kind of interactive points on the side of the worm. So maybe. You have to break them to bring the worm down and that's what initiates phase two but we didn't get to see what phase two was now turn away now for spoiler purposes because rebecca did accidentally show what might be either the new warframe or something to do with your drift or a skin possibly it looks like maybe a daviri dax styled warframe or a drifter skin that was sitting on the horse at the end of this play session and an awesome looking possible new nakana as well with that blue blade very skeletal looking, which would be weird for Drifter, no, but maybe would fit a Daviri themed Warframe. And since every update has new frames, this could be the one that's coming with Daviri. I guess we'll find out more in April when the update actually drops. But the in-person tickets for Tenocon, if you're planning on making your way to London, Ontario, for the event will go on sale on April the 5th. Now, the rest of the dev stream was just them recapping the last 10 years of Warframe and everything that the game and the studio has gone through the ups and the downs, the changes, but I would advise you to watch the full thing over on their YouTube, the full dev stream, because this game has gone through so, so much. From the original idea of Dark Sector Tenno, and the game almost failing with them being laughed out of publisher's offices, to them having real money paid for revives in the game and supercharges, which were like paid for boosts as well. We had a different star chart, we had Excalibur Super Jump, we had multiple variations of UI changes, Melee 1.0, 2.0, a movement system 1.0, 2.0, and so on. All the way up to where we are right now on the verge of the Daviri update and it being possibly the most unique update that Warframe has ever released. So that's the dev stream. It was a cool trip down Nostalgia Lane and there is a lot of cool free stuff for you guys to get your hands on over the next 10 or more weeks. Soul Frame looked very interesting, but like I said, I'll maybe go over that in a video tomorrow. Have a great day and as always, thanks for watching.